Hi everybody, let's spend five minutes to learn how to use the new selection moves in Manifold Future. We're looking at a Manifold Future display and all this works in Future Viewer as well. Uh, what we're looking at here is a drawing called Regions, which takes this data from the Regions table and it shows the regions of uh, France as uh, areas. These are the regions as they were before the uh, reorganization in 2016. Uh, all these are areas, so uh, uh, we can click on them to select them and that sort of thing. Let's first review how uh, default mouse motions work in a manifold future. If you click and drag, that's just a pan. It just moves uh, the display around. Uh, if you right click and draw, uh, draw a box, that's a zoom box. It zooms into the box. And up here we have uh, arrows to go back to the previous view or forward to that, to that view or back again to the previous view. Great. So let's, let's think about how to make selections. To, to, to make a selection, we add the control key as a modifier. So we control click, and that, that is a selection. So let's say we want to select this region here. We control click on that, and it's selected. If we control click on this other one, that's a selection too. By default, control clicking is add to the selection. So anything that we control click on gets added to the selection. If we want to modify it to deselect, we add the shift key. The shift key means deselect, so a shift control is to deselect. Shift control on this one and we deselect it. Shift control on this one, we deselect that object. Shift control on this, we deselect that. By the way, as your people probably know, objects as features. So if we control click on this feature, we select it. If we shift control click on that feature, we deselect it. Fine. Now how about uh, uh, selecting uh, more than one object at the same time? By default with Manifold, that's, that's a control and it's control click and drag. So if we control click and drag, on this area right there, you can see the plus sign in the uh, cursor for the uh, selection box. That means we're adding to the selection. And I control click and drag by default. Anything that touches that cursor box will be selected. So if we control click and drag entirely within an area, only that area uh, will be selected. If, however, we control click and drag on the border between two areas, then anything that touches the selection box, meaning both areas, will be selected. So there they're both selected. Now, before we learned that adding the shift modifier turns a control selection to turn it, when you make it a shift control, turns it into a deselect operation. Same thing works here. So, for example, if we shift control, click and drag, you see the minus sign appearing on the uh, selection box cursor. That means deselect anything which is touching that selection box. And if we draw that shift control, and click and drag in, in the, in, w entirely within a particular area. That means deselect only that area. The default, by the way, uh, is set up so that uh, it applies to anything which touches the selection box to make it convenient for us to do things like this, where we can control, click and drag on, uh, and select all three areas at the once, or shift control, click and drag to deselect all three areas at the, at the same time. Now, that may be inconvenient if we say we just want to select this one area here. We can do it by control, click, and drag entirely within the area. Or, well, suppose we just like to draw a selection box and select only those objects which are entirely within the selection box. The way we do that is also a click, click and drag style operation, but there's a nuance. It's kind of an innovation. We control, click, and start dragging. And then, before we release the mouse, we release the control button, control key. When we press the control key down during the click, click and drag, notice that the border is thinner. When we release the control key, I'll release it now, there, uh, notice that the selection box gets thicker. And the difference between the two is when the selection box is thicker, that, it, that is with the control key up, think of the thicker box as being kind of like a wall that, uh, that kind of strengthens the selection so that only those things within that box are selected. When the control key is down, the selection border is thinner. Think of that as being a weaker wall, a, a less strong wall, so that the selection kind of seeps out and anything which is touching that box gets selected. What I will do is I will release the control key, and you can see how the border is now thick, and that means select only that object within. Let's do the same thing here. Control, click, and start dragging, and that at any time we can release the control, and that makes for a thicker selection border, and only the object entirely within that box will get selected. The same thing works for deselect. So let's say, for example, we have uh, a couple other objects selected, and uh, we only want to deselect this one right here. So we shift control, start the click and drag, and we release the control key anytime, leaving the shift one still, still pressed in to, to indicate that it's a deselect. And when we 
push the control key down, it's a thinner box, and when we release the control key, it's a thicker box, meaning just that thing that is entirely within the box gets deselected. We can do the same thing here. Start with the shift control, click and drag, and then before we release the mouse, we release the control key to make it a thicker box, and that deselects only that object which is entirely within the box. All these things sound a little bit confusing when you first hear them, but when you try them out and your kind of muscle memory gets used to it, you learn very, very quickly that, uh, wow, this is great, it's really fast, it's much faster. It's actually faster to learn how to do it by trying it out like this, like we're doing in the video, than it is to read about in the user documentation. I still recommend people read user documentation, of course, but some things are more easily learned from videos, and you know what? This is one of them. Uh, one last thing to note, uh, I have two other drawings here besides Regents. I have Regents 2, and here's a drawing which is participating with the uh, Bing Maps street background. And uh, here's uh, Regents 3, which is with a Google Maps satellite background. All three drawings take their uh, information from the same table, so all of them share the same selection. So for example, I can alt-click uh, the title bar here for Regents 3 to undock it, and let's alt-click the title bar bar there for Regents 2, so we can move these undocked windows to different locations. And while we're at it, let's uh, double-click open the Regents table, and we'll undock that as well, and uh, resize it to where we can keep an eye on it. Uh, all of the drawings that, you, that are generated from the geometry in the same table will share the same selection. So if we change the selection in any of these drawings, or change it in the table, it will change in all of them. So for example here, let's uh, deselect, in, in this particular drawing, let's deselect with a shift control click that area. It disappears in all of them. Let's deselect this one, it disappears in all of them as well. Let's uh, deselect Champagne Ardenne in that one, and it's deselected in all of them. Anything we do here in the table, for example, we can click on Rhone Alps and then uh, shift control, oops, let's click on this to select it, and then uh, Shift Control click here to select everything in between, and all those will be selected in between. We can collect here a, a Midi Pyrenees, and uh, then uh, Shift Control click here, and everything in between will be deselected. We'll cover the uh, tricky and fast moves in uh, uh, tables later, but the point to make right now is that any change that we make in any of these uh, windows by Control clicking them and uh, Shift Control clicking them to select, deselect, and so forth will be reflected in all of them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Trust me on this, that these uh, moves are extremely fast. Uh, take a few minutes to get your head around them, to practice them, get that muscle memory going, and you'll discover that with just astonishing lightning speed, faster than you've ever been able to do anything like this before in any other system, including Manifold Release 8, you'll be able to do them in Manifold Future even faster. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. We hope to see you back soon, and goodbye from Manifold Future Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.